thank you for my second life. I intend to use it well and make wonderful new dreams of it. Hey guys, I'm Chris. Hey everybody, I'm Robert. And we're the Film Flamers, bringing you another Shooting the Flames. It's our monthly chat show where Chris and I get together to talk about horror news, recent trailers, movies that we've watched, and most importantly, talk about comments and questions from you, the listener. And this month, we've got, I think, everything across the board. We've got reviews, we've got comments, we've got questions, and we got even a voicemail. And in times like these, all the comments and questions that you're sending to us really make us happy, and we're happy to discuss them. So why don't we just get started? Well, I don't know about you, but I've been in quarantine for about two weeks. I have been going to work, actually, so my quarantine is off and on. (laughs) And I just got news today that our quarantine is basically going to last until May. Uh, They keep saying that April the 7th is when ours is supposed to end, but there's just no way in the world that's going to happen. Ours is going to end around like April or March 31st or something uh, for the rest of the Monday we're going to come back. But no, it's been extended till at least like May 1st. Good Lord. So I have like six weeks ahead of me of, yeah, nothing. (laughs) Well, it's a perfect opportunity for you to catch up on past episodes of our podcast and send in more comments and questions that we're going to read on May Shooting the Flames. But Uh, before we get to May. I thought you were talking to me. (laughs) I was like, I listen to our past episodes. (laughs) <laughs> no, I was, I was talking to our dear listeners. <laughs> I didn't realize that would be a striked conversation. I thought we were incorporating it into the episode. Well, before we start talking about May's comments, let's talk about April's. And why don't we start with a review like we normally do? Eric Matthew Orange said, A bloody good time. I started listening with the Stranger by the Lake episode and was doubly delighted that the hosts Robert and Chris were gay and also from Dallas. Felt like the podcast was made specifically for me. From top 10 lists to hot takes and throwback episodes, their content is varied and always fun. On a side note, I've listened to other film podcasts with queer hosts and Robert and Chris's positive attitudes and laughter are refreshing. Well, thank you, Eric Matthew Orange. (laughs) I, I love it when like people from Texas write in, you know what I mean? It's like some sort of like hometown pride or whatever, but <laughs> like that's that's an awesome review. I love how he was like bringing out our gayness and the first thing you did was <laughs> <laughs> what, tongue pop? Yeah. I know. I can't help it. <laughs> so yes, thank it should have much. taken long in that episode that you discovered that we were gay. <laughs> I mean, well, that's one thing that we like, and it's not even just other queer podcasts or anything like there's other podcasts out there about horror movies that we've noticed or just have a weird negative you know slant and we like to keep things as positive as they can be when you know we surround ourselves with things that are so bloody that's right a positive outlook is always the way to go so thank you for that review and uh we look forward to more reviews guys so head over to apple podcast hit the five star button leave us a little snippet of a review and we will read it on next month's episode just like we did for eric matthew orange Next up for our comments, we've got a lot from our episode of The Bodyguard, starting with our voicemail from Glenn from the Tales from the Crib podcast. Hey, guys, this is uh, Glenn calling from Tales from the Crib, and it came from Cherry Hill. I just wanted to let you guys know how much I appreciated your, uh, you know, is it horror or is it not horror, and your latest episode of The Bodyguard. I, I thought it was I thought it was great. Um, personally, I have yet to see The Bodyguard. The episode made me want to see The Bodyguard. It intrigued me. I love the conversation about whether or whether not the movie itself is horror, because I feel like we get so caught up in, like, the definition of what is horror and what isn't horror, and sometimes we get a little bit, you know, picky or maybe even snobby about it. So I think it's awesome to kind of, you know, take a step back, look at that movie, kind of really, like, think it out. And sometimes, like, movies that we wouldn't normally consider being horror are actually pretty scary, um, or at least scary on paper, maybe not so much in execution. Uh, But, you know, a movie that, for me, I was really only familiar with because of the soundtrack, um, you know, and now, like, I'm more intrigued to see it before, and that's going to make more people, I think, go and check it out and maybe watch a movie that they wouldn't have watched otherwise. So, guys, keep up the great work. Uh, love the podcast. Love the episode. Uh, I can't wait to hear what you guys got next. 
Well, Glenn, thank you for calling in with that voicemail. It always makes us happy whenever we get them. We love your podcast, too. Um, if you haven't listened to Tales from the Cribbed, go look it up. It's on the Preach Network, and um, he talks about, like, gateway horror. So it's a little horror adjacent stuff on there, too, and um, we appreciate the comments. We um, obviously talk about horror adjacency a lot on the Film Flamers, and people are going to either agree or disagree with us when it comes to our views on whether or not something is horror. Oh, certainly. And we know that it's not straight up horror. And that's the point, right. you know, because that's the conversation that we wanted to have. We just thought it was fun that you could just take this in that moment, emphasize this and, you know, de-emphasize that. And it's basically Silence of the Lambs, you know, like, yeah. you know, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we thought it was an interesting enough conversation. Plus, we just both love the movie because, you know, we're flouncing queers and yeah, <laughs> we wanted to talk about it. So we're going to do what we want to do. Of course, we 99% of the time we just do horror, movies, you know, so it's uh, like we follow this up with two deep dives on Dawn of the Dead, you know, and we're following uh-huh. up with more horrors. So you don't have to worry about us losing our edge of horror, but we are, we are going to continue to mix it up with some horror adjacency. That's right. Chris and I will always find a way to find the horror in something that's not considered a horror movie. And, you know, and we appreciate the discussion that comes after that because not everyone's going to agree with us. So, but thank you, Glenn, for the voicemail. Keep them coming. Uh, we have some more comments from our episode on the bodyguard. At RL Terry one said, "Never thought of this as being horror adjacent, and to be honest, I still don't feel that it is. However, you both make a solid argument, and you've given me new ways of looking at it. And I love the fried green tomatoes reference. <laughs> Talk about horror adjacency. <laughs> I mean, let's not forget that in fried green tomatoes, they were fucking eating people. You know what I mean? So there's some horror adjacency there too. Damn it. That's true. Mm-hmm." At Cody Landman said, how do you feel about the concept Chris Hemworth and Tessa Thompson came up with them in a remake, but with gender roles reversed? I think that would be awesome. Might make it more of a rom-com, but it would be a different approach to the material. Didn't they do that for Overboard? Like, and it didn't really quite work out? Yes, they did. I mean, obviously the same stars, but yeah, they, um, and Overboard is like one of my favorite movies ever too. and it was ruined I didn't, yeah, by that i'm not watching remakes of movies that i love to death you know i didn't watch the poltergeist remake and i didn't watch that because you know if like if they come out with really great reviews and stuff i'll see them you know but they got shit abysmal reviews and all the people said they wish they hadn't seen it so you know i was validated and go see it so i don't know i i do like chris hemsworth and tessa thompson i they're the people that were in uh they were in men in black together they were in thor ragnarok together you know if mm-hmm. they want to continue and do like the do the whole katherine hepburn spencer tracy thing you know, I think they're a really good couple that knows comedic timing really, really well and can pull it off. But they'd have to have the the perfect script and the perfect director for the situation. I don't know. Exactly. I'd love to yeah. see The Bodyguard with Chris Hemsworth and Tessa Thompson directed by Taika Waititi. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if, if you're going to remake the movie, either make it more horror adjacent or more funny, you know, like either way. I mean, we've, we already have a serious movie, but I love those two actors. And I think that yeah. I would love, I will see them in anything. It's fine. True. You know, I think that's actually great. Lachlan on Facebook said, I was hesitant on this one, but just finished it today. Had never thought of it as a thriller, but can definitely see it. Fun listen. Admittedly, my favorite part was when y'all were gushing about the plane. <laughs> so, <laughs> I mean, come on. It's like the best, like, crescendo in that movie where she's running off that plane to kiss him and he's just standing there like cardboard and the camera's spinning around I mean, but then i ruined it because i told you that the cameraman falls off the no that was not ruined that made it better so every time i watch the bodyguard now i'm going to be crying because they're kissing and then i'll make the sound like we to be the cameraman like flying off of his thing <laughs> it's still going to be my favorite part of the movie no matter what I'm glad I didn't ruin it I'm glad I didn't ruin yeah. everything <laughs> he didn't ruin everything not at all so Andrew from you know Friday the 13th said oh my god quintessential soundtrack of my young gay life so say we all that's right mm-hmm uh michael from facebook said in this case you may have stretched your definition too far but i'll give you guys this much when y'all started singing i did get very scared oh fuck you (laughs) (laughs) come on we're professional singers michael (laughs) you know We've been practicing for this moment all of our lives and we would, you know, record some Whitney Houston-esque moments on our podcast. (laughs) Uh. (laughs) 
No, thank you. Thank you for your comment, Michael. Um, yes, <laughs> we understand that it was pretty bad. <clears throat> but you know what? If anyone is going to do something on Bodyguard, they're going to have to sing or it's just not worth listening to. Exactly. <laughs> We got a comment from our Shooting the Flames episode last March when um, <clears throat> at Hexen Librarian said, I love Saw. I'm so excited for Spiral. I think only Final Destination 6 would make me more excited. What a strange thing to say. <laughs> well, because we talked about the trailer for Saw. Sp- Spiral, Spiral or whatever yeah. it's called. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just stopped watching Final Destinations after the third one. Maybe they continue to get oh, just as you've good. you've missed out. Really? Two. Yes. Oh my God. They're so good. <laughs> well, the first three are good. I just figured, you know, good. I just kind of have an cu- unofficial cutoff at three thinking they're always going to be schlock after that. Like, you know, I heard the Saw movies just kind of get shitty, but maybe not. Uh, maybe I just need to keep watching. I think like we talked about in that episode, like I, we both need a little refresher on Saw. It's been so long since I've even yeah. seen the first and one. In Final Destination, they're forced to get more and more creative. So I do want to see those. With Saw, like I saw the first three and it just does get more creative in how much disturbing shit they can just put in your face versus any kind of like story that makes sense. So I don't know. Well, sort of the same thing for Final Destination too. I mean, this is coming from somebody who like I I have no problems with the torture porn esque horror movies, you know. And well, I mean, I at the end of the day, I, we all have our favorites at the horror buffet, you know. And we're gonna pick up certain true. basics. And that's that's really good. <laughs> the horror movie buffet. How much does that cost? <laughs> Your soul. <laughs> so from our hot take for the invisible man at Philly Engineered, Nikki. Hi, Nikki. Uh, said, my hubby and I saw this last night and I loved it. Very intense. It made me look side eye at my wonderful husband all night thinking, I wish you would. <laughs> I had to immediately listen to your hot take. Now I'm going to watch Upgrade tonight. And she has since reported that she also liked Upgrade. Oh, good. <laughs> so, okay. yeah, I know. Uh, yeah, we loved this movie and Upgrade and we're just looking for anything Lee one at this point, I think. But um, at the Real GL, Hal Jordan said, I was not exactly stoked to see this. Remakes, reimaginings of classic horror rarely work for me, but your conversation has grabbed my attention. By the way, Tom Cruise's Mummy movie wasn't the studio's first crack at Dark Universe. It was actually Dracula Untold a few years back. I still want to see a CGI animated movie with all the serial monsters, Count Chocula, Frankenberry, etc. You know, I think that's a great idea. I think Pixar should get right on it. I mean, I, I commented the same. I was like, I would totally pay to see that, actually. Um, and yeah, we forgot about Dracula Untold because, I mean, everyone else did well, too. Well, I... <laughs> actually knew that did you did we say that in the episode i thought i did but maybe not i don't think i I certainly don't think i said mummy i probably mentioned mummy is like the earlier the last release but dracula and told was supposed to kick it off i thought i don't even remember what the hell that movie was about actually i know i watched it he did watch the invisible man and liked it quite a bit so awesome cool and for our deep dive of dawn of the dead 1978 we got some other comments this one from palms love horror and at real GL Hal Jordan. Did we hear you say you don't like day of the dead? So we have to clarify. Um, they sent these kinds. So that was a question from two different people. Yeah. So palms of horror sent a message on, uh, Patreon, the real GL Hal Jordan commented on Twitter and they both sort of had the same thing. They're like, Oh my God, you don't like day of the dead. So, this was something that I said, I think, and I... You said it wasn't as good. Yeah, I have to clarify. Which is true. It's extremely 100% yes. true. It's not as good. I like so it safe. very much, but comparatively yeah. to Night of the Living Dead and Dawn of the Dead, no, it's not as good. But, yeah, I mean... It's like Alien 3. Alien 3 is great, especially the the director's cut is amazing, and most people haven't seen that shit. I certainly have It's haven't. a completely different cut. <laughs> yeah, um, but it's David Fincher's, like, cut cut. It's really good. Anyway, you can find that on the Blu-ray. Um, it's still really good, but it's not classics like Alien and Aliens, right? Day of the Dead is not a classic to me like Dawn of the Dead or Night of the Living Dead is, certainly. 
you know? Well, put a pin in that Alien 3 comment, because we're going to come up on that in just a moment. But um, we had another uh, comment from our deep dive into Dawn of the Dead 78 at Political Movies. It's also the Psychosemantic podcast. said, popped into my newsfeed right around the time you were talking about the police prioritization of bus even during the zombie apocalypse. And he had a, um, he posted a news article that he read and the headline was with masks at the ready ice agents make arrests on the first day of california's coronavirus lockdown yep so wow. yep i was right uh, jesus i mean i don't know if it's something to be happy about, but hey at least those agents are using protection <laughs> they have their ppe <clears throat> but no, I commented back to him and I was like, I wish I could say that I was surprised about this, but I'm really not, you know, and that unfortunately goes to show you like we were talking about, you know, we have zombies coming back to life in this movie and the police are trying to like bust a criminal or a group of criminals. And you would think mm-hmm. they would prioritize about, you know, protecting the greater good, you know, but even in our own country right now, that's just not happening. So, yeah. Well, hopefully they reprioritize because I'm not sure that's a huge priority right now. Yeah, I don't think that ICE is essential. I think they're not <laughs> essential employees, right? <laughs> we don't have opinions. <laughs> Officially, the film flamers do not have opinions. So, yeah. <laughs> our, ignore everything we say. <laughs> our opinions aren't even our own. <laughs> so, we also have some questions. Well, actually, one from Cody Landman. On the topic of Dr. Sleep's director cut, that would be a good topic for you guys to discuss. Director or even unrated cuts that are actually good or improved or added to the film, and some that were just pointless. Well, you just mentioned one. Well, yeah, um, that's a really good point. Yeah, we could come up with like the best director's cuts, you know, after the fact, because I actually know a lot about that. But yeah, Alien 3 has an amazing director's cut, and so does Dr. Sleep. And we did talk about dr sleep in a hot take maybe it was for patreon well i think you i think you mentioned it we had an extended conversation on patreon and then you also talked about it in last month's uh shooting the flames shooting the flames but we talked about it more i think on our patreon Mm -hmm. episode bonus gretel hansel and dr sleep director's cut yep right there from february so it's recent so if any of you want to be patrons and i don't know catch up on all the bonus content that we have released since we are inception i think there's like 45 episodes or something (laughs) yeah so check those out because we actually went into a little bit more detail i think so yeah so i need to see the alien three director's cut and i I think i think i own it we'll check it out definitely but for me i mean like if we're talking about director's cuts the ultimate for me is always the exorcist i just really enjoyed that there wasn't a whole lot added to it you know but what they did add like was scary and sort of shocking to me and there's also just different versions of movies like legend right it has this whole other score Right. We have the Tangerine Dream score that released in America and we have Jerry Goldsmith's score that re- was released in Europe. And they're both amazing. Right. And they're both one's a darker kind of more adultish kind of take on the film. And the other is more childlike. And it's just really interesting how you can take the same film and do two different things with it. Um, hell, even Aliens uh, has a director's cut that is a little bit longer that actually makes it a better film. You know, so there's a lot. Well, And, and we just talked about <clears throat> on our deep dive for the remake of Dawn of the Dead. Where, you know, they have an unrated director's cut that neither one of us has seen. And, you know... The Argento version? No, no, no. The uh, the remake of Dawn of the Dead, the Snyder one. Oh, I haven't, well, I haven't seen any other version. Uh, oh, sorry. I was talking about the original 78 version. But even that. Yeah. I mean, there's like... I haven't seen the Argento uh, yeah, version. Yeah, there's like thousand and one cuts. I mean, like, I would like to see... Like, if a director puts out a director's cut and they call it a director's cut, I'm probably more likely to go look at it and watch it because it's, it's more their vision. If something's called an unrated, version or something they're just throwing in a whole bunch of schlock for a marketing purpose and that's just not something that is really going to change the movie all that much well there's been so we might have to expand from you know just horror because there's been some amazing director's cuts like troy was a shit movie but then the director's cut of troy was great and same thing for kingdom of heaven ridley scott's kingdom of heaven um it was shitty and it was like famously one of the best director's cuts ever made and it was touted as such when the reviewers came back and they said if this is what had been submitted to theaters it probably would have won some oscars Mm. because it's just that good it's just that much better it's like 45 or 50 minutes of extra stuff and a lot of other things cut out so it's like a completely different movie so yeah there's just a lot of examples what i think i mean to answer the question at cody landman uh if uh give us a year maybe and let us like watch (laughs) some movies and compare maybe we can come up with a whole episode for this you know yeah yeah 
Totally. But that's some serious research time. <laughs> you know? And speaking of Patreon, we have a new patron this month. Yay! We'd like to welcome to our Patreon family, Erin, a.k.a. Palms Love Horror. She is a huge, huge horror fan. And um, she's just not getting into podcasts, really, I think. So she came over and listened to us and has joined the Patreon family. And she's already adding into the discussion on social media. So thanks, Erin, for all the support. We really appreciate and it. And commenting on our Patreon posts. That's right. That we've already, yeah. So thank you, Erin, for joining us. We're happy to have you. Guys, if you go over to patreon.com slash the film flamers, you can find all of our bonus content and early access to our episodes for those $2. So go over and check that out. Okay. Thank you, Aaron. Welcome to the family. Yay! Yay. Horror News. So the power of Christ compels us to tell you that Max von Sydow has passed away. Maybe I shouldn't have brought it up like that. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I couldn't resist. <laughs> Maybe if you just changed your tone a minute. I mean, like <laughs> he was the three-eyed raven in Game of Thrones, mm -hmm. also, and he's been in a shit tons of other things like uh, Shutter Island, one of my favorites. I love The Exorcist very, very much, <clears throat> and um, I I love Max von Sydow. So it was a a sad day to hear that news, but um, that's not the only one we've lost. Uh, Stuart Gordon, the director of Reanimator, has also passed away. So oh. I know. Um, Erin, our new patron, she, uh, has a circle of favorites and Stuart Gordon is one of them. And I think she told me on that day that he died, that she has like two or three left in her circle of favorites. The rest have all passed away. And I'm like, well, you know, the greats uh, have to go eventually, but, um, well, all the J's are dying in in uh, film scoring. Like Jerry Goldsmith died, I cried when that happened. And James Horner died in a horrible airplane crash, which was horrific. And I'm sure, you know, especially with the coronavirus going around, that um, John Williams isn't long for this world, and he's like 90. Oh Lord, my God, that would be a sad day in Hollywood too. Jesus. Mm -hmm. But hey, we can always remember that we have these movies to go back and remember these people like Max von Sydow and Stuart Gordon. I mean, half of his movies are on Shudder right now. So go and watch Reanimator. Go and watch From Beyond. Go and watch Dolls and just mm -hmm. remember the yeah. work that they had put out. And they're never lost for good. And speaking of bodies, Jennifer's body and the invitation director, Karen Kusama, <laughs> that was a horrible transition. <laughs> It's like we're trying to like put people off. <laughs> We've had enough of being likable. <laughs> 2020 is the year of us being villains. <laughs> Dark humor is my favorite. <laughs> So anyway, Jennifer's body and the invitation director, Karen Kusama, is attached to direct the new, a new take on Dracula for Blumhouse. And I'm excited about this. I am too, actually, because I, I, I love her work. And I mean, we, we just did an episode on the invitation back in January, right? So we talked at length about Karen Kusama. And yeah, and I love that movie so much. I mean, she's she's a great director. She just really is. And the people writing the script are the people who wrote the invitation, who wrote, you know, Destroyer. I mean, like the team that she works with. I mean, it's just going to be a, a Kusama film. Um, and I mean, if we're going to go and reinvigorate some of these older classic Hollywood monster movies, I mean, let's get some good directors attached like Lee Wan and Karen Kusama. I mean, yeah. that makes me very excited. I am just nervous, though. Just, you know, because especially with the whole, you know, Dracula Untold and then the Netflix abortion, like, I I don't know. I'm a little nervous about Dracula, you know, unless she does something completely new or actually goes and tries to do the book. Mm, I don't well, know that I'm going to I think it's supposed to be said in present day. Fuck me. Yeah. So, I mean, like, I'm excited about her as a director on it, but I mean, like, this this is the way they're going with it. Then it, it could be trash, you know, but I like to... Dracula 2000. <laughs> 20. <laughs> Dracula has to be picky about who he bites because he doesn't want to catch the coronavirus. Mm. Do you remember that movie, Dracula 2000? Oh, yes. I own that movie. <laughs> 
<laughs> because I can't turn down a five dollar bin filled with horror films. <laughs> I'm like, you never know when I want to watch this movie. It's probably still encased in plastic. For like, God, it's like the wilted salad in the horror movie buffet. <laughs> We have such expired foods to show you. <laughs> Fuck me. All right. Well, come on, make that movie. Put it out. We're going to go watch it. Last up, the One Million Moms Boycott marvels the Eternals over a same-sex kiss. An alleged same-sex kiss. I mean, we don't even know what's going to be in the movie yet, right? They, they, I guess, said that, you know, I think that it was getting rated or something. And that's like one of the little things. And so that's how it got out, I guess. I don't understand. Why is One Million Moms like a conservative or a religious group? I mean, I thought it. I thought it was like, oh, that's mad. Um, yeah, they're an actual driving. good organization as opposed to this one. Yes, who's just policing what people yeah. watch and see. Here's here's my concern about this. Right, there are lots and lots of gay comic book fans, right, or gay, you know, anime fans, gay science fiction fans, gay horror fans, right, and. We have lived our entire lives watching movies with nothing but straight people in them, right? And all we want is just, can we have one character, you know, that that can be openly gay and have a kiss like that? And I can guarantee you, this movie has not been released yet. It's supposed to come out in the fall if everything works out properly with the theaters and whatnot going on right now. People, if the studio listens to them and removes offensive content or what people would deem offensive content, they won't. They didn't remove it for Star Wars, and there was two lesbians thank kissing. Thank God. That one. I mean, like I, Marvel. Of course, they were like in the far background. You had like binoculars, but I mean, so like this is what gay comic book fans have been waiting for forever. We've had a shit ton of Marvel movies with nothing but like straight people, you know. So I think everyone kind of understands that. I think even them, they would understand that. I think they're coming from this like from a moral point of view rather than like an empath- you know empathetic point of yeah. view, obviously. And so you know they're asking the question, you know, it's you know we don't want our kids seeing this, you know, it's you know too early or this or that or we should never see that, right? And it's like for your little son or your little daughter or whoever, when is it too early for them to see Snow White and the Prince kiss Mm -hmm. or Cinderella? You know, it doesn't make a fucking difference. Yep. You know, it's two like consensual people in love kissing, like get the fuck over it. It's no different. Anyway, I digress. I know. I mean, like I could sit here and like bandstand forever and I should just get my, my, get off my soapbox, but I don't know. It just really pisses me off. That people are like boycotting a movie that hasn't even come out yet for a kiss that we don't even know what it's like in the movie. But Robert, they don't want to answer the question, why are those two boys kissing or why are those two girls kissing? Well, because they don't want to be parents, apparently. Clearly. <laughs> oh, my God. This just reminds me. And this is just a, a side anecdote. Right. So um, I, I'm married to a man, obviously. And my my friends came to the wedding and um she said, this is, this is my daughter's first wedding they've ever been to. And we're excited that the first wedding they're going to go to is a same sex marriage. And I'm like, that's amazing. Right. So, Hey, 1 million moms, why don't you just fuck off? Knock it off. <laughs> <laughs> After you see the movie, you can speak to the manager and see if you can get a free ticket or something. But, oh wait, I guess they won't be seeing the movie because it's boycotted. No one cares. You're canceled. <laughs> 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 Oh, all right. I'm going to go snatch a million wigs. <laughs> Coming soon. So our first trailer is for a horror film called Exorcism at 60,000 Feet. <laughs> okay. Starring the poor, poor Lance Henriksen. Among as others. the pilot. Adrian Barbeau is also in this movie. <laughs> um yeah so i can't really tell like what the plot of this movie is essentially like someone's possessed and they get on a plane and they have to perform the exorcism lest the plane go down i don't it looks it looks ridiculous really but (laughs) i don't know i'm gonna watch it though yeah watch yeah all the links for these trailers and news articles and everything are in the show notes so be sure to check 
them out. I guess. I don't know. I just <laughs> guffawed with laughter <clears throat> when they had that woman sitting and behind her was like this little plush looking animal behind. And it was supposed to be like screaming or violent looking. And I, just, I was like, oh, it looks so cuddly. <laughs> just like this movie has a budget of like five dollars. <laughs> oh, poor Lance Henriksen. I know. And Adrian Barbo. Didn't you just meet him? Right. Yes, I did. He yeah. was high as fuck. <laughs> he probably Everyone there. <laughs> that same day that he signed your autograph high as fuck he probably like signed the deal to make this all movie. the celebrities there just to like be there all day were just high as hell i mean that's the way i'd do it except for the one woman i got a signature from who did you get a sing- who did you get all those pictures and videos with that i took evil len oh yeah oh my god yeah what the fuck is her name <laughs> oh meg foster <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Meg Foster. She was high as fuck. Oh my god. Yeah, but she was so <laughs> lovely. I mean, she was, but I mean, like at least she knew what was happening. Versus Lance Henriksen had no idea what was going on. But I did meet uh fucking Barbara Hershey, and she was on it. We were having like political talks. Who else was like super put together that we didn't go to her? T- Tracy Lords. <laughs> Tracy <laughs> Lords. <laughs> Yeah. Oh my god, we're not even talking about this movie. Anyway. She's like, hello, I'm Tracy Law. <laughs> I'm an important advertising executive. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Yeah, so uh go watch the trailer for Exorcism at 60,000 feet. Let us know what you think. It's coming out on VOD pretty soon. I'm fairly certain I'm gonna be watching it, so we'll be talking about it very soon. So our next trailer is porno. <laughs> <laughs> we've just given up <laughs> well i mean in the time of covid19 when movies are not coming out i didn't expect there to be like a whole bunch of trailers you know but hey porno looks good to me <laughs> what well i mean both of for our listeners the movie is literally called porno <laughs> i think they know that but i mean i have to say that both the movie porno and actual porno looks good to me so. <laughs> <laughs> so this movie is about a group of uh movie theater workers who after closing stumble across an old porno movie that they show and release a sex demon <laughs> god that reminds me of that one with peter dinklage where they go to like the larp or whatever where they all dress up as like I've, medieval I've characters never seen that movie. it's good <laughs> <Is> it? <laughs> it's really good <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I've always wanted to see that. I don't even know what it's called. I need to watch it. It's that. got several really good actors in it, but yeah, it was good. Anyway. So, so yeah. This is a red band trailer for this movie. And, and it's um, got a penis at the end. Yeah. It just like devolves into a whole bunch of gore and nudity with a dick right at the very end of it. <laughs> so, I mean, if that's what this movie has in store for me, sign me the fuck up. It's coming to VOD in May. I'm going to watch it. Next up, we've got Inheritance, which is a thriller starring Lily Collins and Simon Pegg in what looks like either like a gray hat role or like an actual villain role. Yeah, I didn't even realize that was him. Yeah. He looks freaky as hell. I don't think I've ever heard him use an American accent. I'm like a, I have I have in something. I forgot when what it was, but Yeah, but all jokes aside, I mean like this this trailer actually looks like a very good movie, right? And um it's sort of like horror adjacent y thriller type, but it looks great. It looks well acted. Yeah. I mean Well, all thrillers are pretty much automatically horror adjacent. I mean, at least on this podcast for sure. Yeah. But uh yeah, I mean I it's a well made trailer. It really made me want to see the movie. I think it's about a girl whose father died and he had some sort of questionable business practices and he leaves her an inheritance which is a man sort of locked away in a basement i don't know like yeah i like it's just so bizarre looking but and he's like release me <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so there's horror elements yeah <laughs> i mean it looks it looks intriguing and i have to say that lily collins is wearing the most fantastic leather coat in a scene where she's like digging in the woods and i was like i'll watch the movie just to see what that coat looks like closer God, doing coats, i swear to god i love coats <laughs> <laughs> and lastly we've got defending jacob which is a new television thriller coming to apple tv so i'll never see it but it stars chris evans and the chick from downton abbey oh which chick from downton abbey the oldest sister oh i like her yeah and uh god that really good actor that was in um jk simmons yeah 
J.K. Simmons. Yeah. I saw him for a brief moment. There's actually like a shit ton of people in this TV yeah. show. It looks very, very good. Very well acted. Very tense. And I shed a tear at the end of it while watching it. Yeah. I, mean, I, I know. He's giving me a look via Skype right now because we're socially <laughs> distant. Um, <laughs> so. We were being socially distant before it was cool. <laughs> But yeah, there's some line. He was like, you can choose to be a good man or you can choose to be a father. And I was like, <laughs> just like I don't know. Maudlin. <laughs> anyway, it looks good. I would subscribe to watch that. They have another show on Apple TV that everyone loved last year with Jennifer Aniston. About, it's going to be called The Morning Show or something like that. Oh, yeah. I saw it got middling reviews, didn't it? But it was up for well, a lot of awards. Yeah, it won a lot of awards. So, I mean, I. I and mean, Reese Witherspoon. Yes. She's in like, all and kinds Aniston. of TV shows now. She's got another one called like Fire Something or Other, and then she was on like Big Little Liars or whatever the hell it was. Or so it's like Big Little Liars and Pretty Little Fires. I don't know either. I mean, it's on Hulu. <laughs> I mean, yeah. So she's all over the place when a, it comes to TV. Is that actually like a spinoff of Big Little? I don't. I don't know. No, no, it's a different show entirely. She's just know. no longer making movies. She's sticking to the small screen. But hey, I think it's great that I mean, a, a big movie star like Chris Evans would do something like this, you know, get, get into a role where you get to explore things over a six or seven episode arc or whatnot, you know, it's great. I think it shows a, a drastic change in the program that we see on television, which we've seen already over the last decade or two. Right. But mm -hmm. I mean, I think that a lot of writers and directors are going to be able to make their dream projects and they will go to television or streaming services to do it and they'll get the acting caliber to follow. Right. So, I mean, I'm pretty excited to watch this. Actually, I think I probably will based on that single tear that I shed in that moment. <clears throat> and it's a well-made trailer and that kid from fucking it is in it. And he looks like he's doing a damn good job acting in this movie. So movie TV show, sign me up. Like really, mm -hmm. I'll watch it. Recommendations. All right. So in the time of COVID-19, we've been streaming and watching. And uh, Chris, what's some things that you've been watching? Well, I started with Castlevania because I saw that it had season three released. And I remember binging season one and two. And I don't know for the life of me why I haven't mentioned this show before. Because, maybe because season three is just my favorite so far, but season one and two are very, very solid. Now, this is an, an animated TV show on Netflix. Mm -hmm. And first of all, I'm not really, I don't know, drawn to animated TV shows or movies, really. I keep getting surprised by them, so I don't know why. <laughs> um, and also, it's a little like, um, it seems like it's a little, it styles maybe a little bit like the Japan, Japan, you know, anime. Yeah which I'm not really drawn to. Of course, I keep getting blown away by that too. I, I even, uh -huh. I just hear a few notes from spirited away and I'm basically bawling and I'm not the crying type, you know, but this is an adult cartoon and it's based off of a video game series that I never played. Um, what? Really? You never played Castlevania? No. <gasps> oh my God. For once, I can say that I played a video game that you haven't. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. No. Like, everyone was playing it and I just somehow missed it. I was busy playing Doom, which, you know, I'm playing now because Doom Eternal just came out. 30 years after the first one movie or the, well the i mean to be out. fair like castlevania the video game came out when i was a wee child like six or seven so you would have been much sm well, smaller Castlevania is like you know like five games out now or something five or six yeah. or something at this point but anyway this is heavily heavily adult and ex like there's nudity and kinds of gore i've never seen before especially oh. in season three my god the things that they do just blew my fucking mind there's a part where like there's this like sorceress guy sorcerer guy and he's basically mind controlling this entire town to build it for him so he can be like king of all the mindless assholes i guess be <laughs> <laughs> but he's trying to defend the town from like this other guy that can stab people and turn them into literal demons from hell <gasps> And so this guy's got his own little army and this guy's, you know, and there's trying to invade. And so it's basically like, you know, real people that are taken over like minds held or whatever. And you could tell by their like gl glowing green eyes or whatever. And then all the yeah. demons coming in to like take over and kill this guy. So he takes all of these people and puts them in this giant ball of people flesh 
and just starts hurtling meteors of people as weapons. And then he starts using them. The guy gets into the tower and he's like having tendrils of bodies go in after the guy, like tent, like, like tentacles hands. And then of course you get the, he's defeated spoiler. Sorry. And all of the, and this is just a side thing. This is not a main point. This is just one of the side things that happens. Right. And of course they're all floating in the air and the guy gets killed and all the people you the sick realization that all these people are just falling from the sky and all of them hit the ground and die thousands of people. And then the guy, of course, fresh fucking corpses for to bring a demon army into the world, you know? So it's like the shit that happens. There's this one scene with um, that same guy that can raise the demons from corpses and, and stuff. He never, you don't talk to the demons. The demons don't talk, but he's like, which is the one of you that can talk very well? And so they're sitting by a campfire and the one comes up and he's like, do you remember who you were before you came back? And he describes a life in, um, I guess, Athens and that he was killed by the Christians and, and everything and, and that and what his sin was and why he went to hell. And he was like, he described it as a dream that he can, that's half remembered and that's horrible or whatever, but that he, since he's gone to hell, he has learned to enjoy sin. And now that he's back for a fleeting moment to come and destroy life, He's hoping to create wonderful, beautiful dreams for himself when he's back in hell. And I'm like, holy shit. Like, it was so well acted and done. An incredible scene. Like, I was just gave me shivers just thinking about it. So this is an amazing series. So if you guys can have the patience to kind of get into um, it, get into it, especially by the time season three comes around, it's amazing. But I think the first season got like 70-something on Rotten Tomatoes, and the second two seasons have 100%. Oh, damn. So, really? Yeah. Yes. So it is horror to the highest degree. So check that out. One has been around for a couple of years, right? I mean, the, the yeah. first season came out several and years I ago. I think the first season is only four episodes long. And the second season was like eight and this one's 10, right? So, or something like that. So they keep getting longer. And so they're really fast watches. So each one is like 30 minutes long. I was scrolling through Facebook today and, um, Season four has been greenlit. So apparently there's more coming to Netflix. So yeah, there has to be. And there's a lot of, cool characters that you would like. So yeah, I think uh, you and your husband would really enjoy it. I just have to remember that. I mean, cause I have this like off put thing about animation or whatever, and it's, it's really just me. And I don't know why, because every time I watch something that's animated, I tend to like it, you that's know, exactly and I just, what I just told you. Yeah. Yeah. I've just got to get over it, <clears throat> but it's so hard, you know? Yeah. I mean, because when you showed us that one show on Netflix, what the hell was it called? Love, Death, and Robots yeah. or whatever? and some of yeah. that reminded me of this, yeah. It was so amazing, you know? So I need to just, you know, get over my fucking barrier and give things a chance. I mean, I'll check it out. So I was uh, scrolling through movies to watch on Amazon Prime in the rent or buy section, right? Like new releases. And I came across a movie called Swallow. Mm -hmm. And I remembered it because I had seen it scrolling through social media at some point. And I was just like, okay, I'm, I'm going to watch this movie. And it was bizarre and wonderful and just well acted and just amazing. So essentially, this is a, a 2019 movie that was released in 2020. We might have mentioned the trailer last shooting. I'm not sure. I don't know that. I mean, because I, I don't know that I've even seen the trailer for this movie before I watched it. I just We talked about it. Possibly. I, uh, it just it sounded like a really cool premise, but it's about a woman who is sort of unhappily married, but she's in a marriage of convenience and sort of has to stay in it. And she's trying to be a doting wife and becomes an expectant mother. And she develops a obsession or compulsion where she needs to swallow objects. Right. Mm. And it starts with things as simple as a marble and it moves on to things like a nail or even larger objects than that, you know. But the movie really is about like the way that people treat people with mental illnesses or compulsions like that, right? They just don't hmm. understand why. And it was just a phenomenal fucking movie. So did was it like the knowing that you're very literary did it remind you at all of like the yellow wallpaper yeah i mean it wasn't even like quite as on the nose as the yellow wallpaper really i mean like it was it was 
an emotional kind of journey in a way that the yellow wallpaper can't be mm, right. Yeah. Cause it's, it's sort of visual, yeah. right? We can sit there and read and use our mind's eye in the yellow wallpaper. But in this, we actually get to see a woman like swallow and pass an object. Right. And so like, it seemed very horror adjacent to me, but it, it's not wait, like you I, see her shit these things out. I mean, there's a scene where she has to go to the hospital. Oh right? yeah. And they pump her stomach and or they're something. like, yeah, they're like, there's something in your body and they have to sort of like forcibly remove it, you know? And so, but even, even the ones that she passes, she keeps, it's like a little collection on her desk, right? She's got this whole trophy case of things that she's swallowed because she's so like bored with her life or feels trapped or whatever. And this woman, her name is uh, Haley Bennett. Like her performance in this movie is just astounding and like i really went into this movie thinking okay i'm just gonna watch a movie about a woman swallowing shit and i didn't i didn't think i'd be as affected as i was watching it and it slowly has become my favorite movie of 2020 so far that i've seen oh like, wow it's just see you mentioned so, it but so i didn't good. know that you liked, liked it that much you said it was good well, I'm trying to like save some of the conversation for shooting the flames a little bit. You know, I mean, like sidebar listeners, Chris and I talk all the time. But uh, so, yeah, I didn't want to like, you know, just give everything away. You know, I sent you the the trailer link. And yeah, OK, that's when we talked about the trailer. OK, yeah. And I was just like, this movie is good. And it, but it's very good. Very, very good. I wish that I had bought it instead of rented it. In fact, I probably will go back and watch well, this I've movie Well, I've seen articles where people are talking about it, you know, and it actually reminds me of this um, episode of My Strange Addiction. Okay. And God, I don't know if I watched that on Netflix or YouTube, but years ago, a couple of years ago, where this guy like literally had an addiction of eating glass and he would literally just like break something and then start chewing the glass so you could hear it. And they'd show you like the ripping that it would do throughout a system and everything. And it was just, ugh, ugh. this was an intense watch. And I mean, she, she eats things as like simple as dirt, you know, and that's, that's one thing, you know, but like it, it got to a point where she's like laying in bed and just like eating handfuls of dirt while watching TV. Like we'd be eating popcorn or chips, you know? And it's just, I don't know. It's so hard for me to describe everyone. I think that you should go to Amazon right now and rent this movie and watch it for the performance alone. Okay. Like I know the, academy is way too uptight to give her any sort of nomination but i mean independent spirit awards if you're listening i mean Haley bennett do it she deserves all the accolades and i really hope that this movie finds some sort of cult following because it really has all the makings of a cult movie it's very well shot it's kind of retro looking i mean it's just a well-made movie beautiful to look at mm-hmm. just go check it out five stars totally wow okay so next on my list, I watched Pixar's Onward. Oh, I want to see this. So apparently, I think it's not even $20 to rent. It's $20 and you own it. So you, Oh, is it really? Yeah, I believe so. Because it said you own this. So I believe that it's that expensive because you can literally purchase it. And so that kind of justifies the price a little bit. You know, of course, it's a hard sell, you know, to watch something for the first time and buy it, you know, but yeah. At least you get to keep it for those higher costs, you know, so I'm assuming it's the same way for like the hunt and things like that. So we'll see. But I kind of wanted to, I don't know, do a little tabula rasa on my brain after watching Castlevania. (laughs) Because my God, the gore. Um, Anyway, so I watched on. You just keep on selling that show to me. I don't (laughs) (laughs) know. It might actually turn your stomach. I'm okay with that. Which is good. But <clears throat> so anyway, I watched Onward and it was good. It was sweet. And I love the message, honestly. It was a really good and unique message, I thought, uh, the more I thought about it. And it's kind of like the obvious thing, but they they really ended it well. They were brave in the way they kind of ended it, you know. Um, oh. And the and actually the credits are Brandy Carlisle. So Yay, was... I love Brandy Carlisle too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh it was good. I would I would give, definitely give it like a I think I gave it like a 4 star. There aren't that many Pixar movies or animated movies that I want to see just flat out based on the the trailer, right? Mm. But this looked a little horror adjacent enough to like pique my interest a little bit. <laughs> and I mean, like my husband watches these things all the time and I'm like, "No, no, I don't want to watch that." And then every time I sit down and do it, I end up loving it, yep. you know? And so I'm like, this this is one that I actually do want to see. And aside from being able to purchase it on Amazon, by the time that this recording hits our feed, it'll be available on Disney Plus because Disney is doing the right thing during this time and is releasing their movies for everyone to see. So 
Yeah, I was actually a well, little least, pissed off because you were the one that told me that it was going to be on Disney+. Plus. <laughs> I'm like, then why would they do this? <laughs> I, was, I was saving my $20 because I already paid for Disney+. Plus. So. Well, I'm pissed off now because I've been watching Picard and I really should have watched the last episode before we recorded this. And now it's all free. And now yeah. it's all fucking free. And I paid for a year of fucking CBS. <laughs> so I'm pissed off. But, but it's okay. My husband has gotten so much enjoyment out of your <laughs> subscription to CBS All Access. He's just watched everything. And then the last episode was spoiled for me because some asshole on YouTube decided to do like a review episode and showed like a thumbnail that's totally spoilerific. So I heard because I'm I'm not watching Picard until it's completely done with. I heard that there's some talk of a Oh, is it finished? It's the last <gasps> episode. Was yesterday. Uh, I heard there was some talk of a seven of nine spinoff. So. Yes, I've seen those articles too, but who knows? Yeah. It was a while to go for that. Yeah. So uh, also during my scrollings through social media and on Amazon, I realized that they had finally released a documentary called Scream Queen, My Nightmare on Elm Street, which is um, about um, the actor from Nightmare on Elm Street 2 Mm -hmm. and his experiences making that movie and the aftermath that came after it. Because everyone calls this like one of the gayest horror movies ever made, right? And he was a gay man struggling with his identity and things like that during the time of its making and it sort of followed him throughout his career or non-existent career as it would be. And I was really looking forward to watching this documentary, mostly because I love the franchise and, you know, I I like that particular iteration of it. And this one doesn't... I've seen the trailer. Yeah, it doesn't disappoint. Like, it's a really good look at what it means to be a closeted gay man in Hollywood, especially in the eighties. I wanted more, you know, I kind of wanted a a more hard hitting documentary, a hard hitting look at like homosexuality and horror films and like its repercussions to its stars and things like that. But I mean, he, he got to tell his story that he obviously wanted to for a very long time. And it was, it was a good watch, you know? And I, I wish that I could meet this man and, and talk to him about it because I, I love A Nightmare on Elm Street Part 2 and I got to know a whole lot more about the making of that movie and about him as a person and it was it was good. Awesome. So next up, I still needed cleansing and eye bleach. <laughs> <laughs> so I literally watched every Toy Story movie ever made Oh, because I'd never seen any of them. I'd never even seen the first one. I've never seen a Toy Story movie at all. First of all, I don't know how that's even fucking possible from someone who never watches animated movies who have seen all but the last Toy Story. Did you watch them back to back? Yes. Oh, back my to back God. All long. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> yeah. The same night I watched Onward. I watched like five movies back to back. Fuck me, Chris. Good <laughs> Lord. I was depressed. <laughs> well, did that make you happier? And I needed eye bleach, like I said. Yeah, um, I don't know. Watching Onward and then all the Toy Story movies, of course, I felt you know more cleansed. Okay, my, like my soul had been dripping with black oil, and now it's all sparkly clean. So, did you like ball your eyes out watching Toy Stories? No. So <laughs> the first one I gave a three and a half. Okay. Yeah. And the second one I gave a four star. Okay. Maybe. And then the th- no, the first one I gave a four star. The second one I gave a three and a half. The third one I gave a four star. And then the fourth one I gave a three and a half. I did have a tear run down my cheek when th- at the end of the third one. The third one is the saddest to me. Like it just to me, the third one's probably one of the best, if not the be- if not the best. Yeah. But it was really cool seeing like the shitty animation from 1995 uh-huh. versus the amazing animation from 2019. Like by the t- like the second one was looking a lot better. And then the, because that was like 2000 or 1999 or something. And then the next one was like, I don't know, 2009 or something, 2008. And it was looking like what I'd expect from Pixar. And then like to the 2019 one, it was like photo real. <laughs> it was like everything looks super, super realistic. And it was like crazy. It also has some of the darkest humor. Uh, there were some like horror references with the dummies and stuff in the fourth one. So the fourth one's probably the the, the darkest, which was fun. Um, but I probably enjoyed as far as like emotionally the third one the best. God, was it 1995 when that first one came out? Jesus Christ. Yeah. I remember seeing Toy was, Story in the theater with It was Joss Whedon before Buffy. <laughs> So like I like I, I had a group of friends all through high school and I randomly met this one senior girl. Um and I mean she was sort of like artsy and literate. And uh, so I sort of like hung out with her group of friends for a little bit. And we all went to go see Toy Story one night. 
I don't I haven't thought about that in years. Anyway, <laughs> so, well, I must have been 12 or 13 when it came out because it must have been around the time I moved from California to Texas and I wasn't having it. So, yeah, I was about like 16 or 17, maybe I, like 16 at least. But I think like I was just the perfect age for all the cl- the classic uh, reemergence of Disney, like when the Little Mermaid came out and they had their like, you know, Disney was like a thing again. Yeah. Right. Oh yeah. Um, you know, they had this like quick thing of like the little mermaid and Aladdin and beauty, beauty and, the, and the, beast. the beast. Yeah. And then fucking Tarzan came out and I was like, this is bullshit. And then toy story came out and I was like, or toy story might even come out before Tarzan. And I was just like, I have no interest in this. They're toys. They're, this is for like six year olds. And so I just, you know, I was like 13 and I was just like, I'm done with it. So I don't know. Oh, I really think I'll go that watch the last unicorn. <laughs> <laughs> which I also like, but I think that adults well, dark as fuck. <laughs> can really appreciate Toy Story because it has some sort of nostalgia to twinge to it, you know? By yes, by the third one, it definitely does. Yeah. And that's when it comes home. Yeah. And so I mean, like the older you get, like I should probably go back and rewatch the first Toy Story because I probably feel a whole lot different. I've only seen it the one time, you know? And I mean, I would probably feel a whole lot differently about it now than I did then. I mean, I never really played with toys when I was a kid, really. I was watching horror movies and I don't know, smoking cigarettes, but I don't, I mean, so they're all, they're also on Disney plus, I assume, right? That's how I watch them all. Thank you for your subscription. Huh. Wait, I shouldn't say that out loud. I mean, we're trading back and <laughs> forth. I mean, CBS to Disney plus, what the fuck? It's, <laughs> That's true. They don't listen to our podcast. Well, you know what? During this quarantine time, my husband and I are looking forward to watching things together, which we haven't done in quite a while. And uh, so we wa- we wanted to watch a movie together the other night, and uh, he he logged out from working from home, and I was just like, "Hey, I've been having kind of a hard day reading all the news and shit. I want to watch something fun. Can you watch my favorite horror movie of last year with me? Because it's kind of a comedy." So I got my husband to sit down and watch Ready or Not with me the other night. Oh, he liked that. <laughs> he he liked it. He yeah. he chuckled out loud a couple times, you know, which is which is good. But you know, we had a conversation after it, and he he had thoughts on the movie, and he was talking about the characters and possible past events. So I know that he was into it. Yeah. But I mean, just we've already talked about Ready or Not at length in our hot take episode on that, and in our like recap of 2019. So I'm not going to harp on it too much. But I just want to say that watching that movie when you're having a really hard day just makes you happy. <laughs> You know, yeah. I mean, like I took a minute, but just a minute. <laughs> <laughs> when he was here in Boston visiting, um, he told me to text him if there was a horror movie that I thought he would like. Oh, good. Yeah, I'm so, so proud of him. That's good. Forward movement. He's like, not that I'm going to listen to your podcast, but. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, he's in the other room. For all I know, he's standing right outside the door right now. He's heard the podcast. but yeah he watched the invisible man he watched ready or not so i mean i'm maybe i'm slowly changing my husband into like a a horror fan i just have to pick and choose i have to cherry pick the titles right but i also watched a movie randomly on netflix um based upon you know recommendations that i've seen online it's called the girl on the third floor it also came out last year and I've, I've heard that it was a very good movie and it's something like 80% on Rotten Tomatoes with an audience score of like 20%. And so I was like, well, let me just give it a watch. It's on Netflix. It's free. But let me tell you, everyone and Chris, I have not seen a movie this fucking terrible in a very <laughs> long time. <laughs> Oh yeah, I remember your text. <laughs> oh my God, it was so fucking bad. I have never, never... I like I was texting someone else, another friend, and I was just like, "This movie is the most poorly written, poorly acted piece of shit I have ever seen." I think I called it a steaming pile of shit, actually. And I have seen a lot of bad movies in my time, but this one just sort of takes the cake. So it's like a man who's he he buys this sort of like dilapidated house supposedly even though it looks in pretty good condition to me and uh he's he's gonna renovate this house to make it you know livable for his pregnant wife who's going to be joining him soon but the house has other plans right it's sort of haunted by the ghosts of the ex hookers who worked in it because it used to be a brothel i don't know the entire plot is ridiculous and uh, it stars a actor who used to be a wrestler or a MMA fighter named CM Punk. Okay. 
And I mean, he's, he's attractive, but that's like the only thing that was holding me on to this movie. His acting is just atrocious. It makes Kevin Costner and the bodyguard look like fucking Laurence Olivier. I mean, <laughs> my God. And I mean, there's just like, this movie has, it's trying to send you a message and maybe not slap you over the face with it too hardly, but there's like semen oozing out of like sockets and shit. And I'm like, I don't know what the fuck is going on with this movie. All the critics who loved it, are completely wrong and the audience score is pretty accurate in my opinion i know that this movie has got some supporters out there online so don't come at me too hard but um my god i think i gave it like one and a half stars on letterboxd and it's the lowest movie i've ever rated on letterboxd so holy shit go into this with some trepidation was it like 47 hours bad <laughs> i liked 47 hours a hell of a lot more than i like this movie <laughs> i gave 47 hours three stars i mean i still don't know why he didn't we gave it a good review man <laughs> <laughs> take a minute <laughs> <laughs> but just a minute way to open a fresh wound or <laughs> no watch 47 hours do not watch girl on the third floor please or do and tell me i mean maybe i'm wrong maybe i missed something that's just like outstanding in this movie that i just didn't see so someone pointed out to me if you're a fan of the movie i know it has its fans but to mm. me it was just awful i you need to watch this at some point because i really need to know your <laughs> thoughts on it i've got to know what you think about you need it. catharsis <laughs> <sighs> Talk about a, a palate cleansing is what I need after. Th- I haven't watched the movie since I watched that. I was just like, no, I almost canceled my fucking ne- Netflix subscription. I'm like, no more from you. <laughs> Broke your TV. <laughs> You've given me too much. Never again. <laughs> well, holy dick. I watched <laughs> Chopping Mall. Finally. finally. <laughs> I gave it a two and a half. Oh. Uh, <laughs> i know i saw on letterbox i cheated it's it's one of those movies no it's like we were just talking about like you know making a top 10 of like bad movies we love or you know like shitty <laughs> rotten <laughs> movies we love is a book that's coming out yeah or something. yeah uh you know or you know hate to love or something like that top 10 movies you hate to love mm-hmm. but this could be one of those easily it's really shitty the the dialogue and the acting and the effects everything's really fucking shitty you know it's like a terminator knockoff but like a cross between like terminator if terminator and like friday the 13th had a mutated baby that had an extra chromosome or something like so it's like terminator and friday the 13th had a baby and it came out short circuit do you remember that movie? <laughs> Batteries not included or something. Oh, I like that movie a lot. <laughs> so walk softly. It's okay. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't know. It's it was definitely like a group movie. Like you would sit down and you have it in the background and just to like laugh with it and stuff or and laugh at it. You know, but yeah, it it <laughs> It's not like, um, God, what was that movie with the big twist at the end? Sleepaway Camp. Sleepaway Camp, yeah. So Sleepaway Camp kind of knows itself and kind of plays with its own tone. This doesn't really know itself, and it doesn't quite know what its tone is. And it takes itself a little too seriously, I think. And it's like they thought they were making a Terminator, and they ended up with, like, you know, girl on the third floor. Um, <laughs> I mean, yeah, I, I, it's so hard. I haven't seen Chopping Mall in probably like six or seven months. And I, I mean, I, it's one of those movies I go back to to watch when I just want to have mindless fun, right? Like it's yeah, really not, sure. it's really yeah. not a, a fantastically made or well acted movie, right? But it's, 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 and fun. it would have been if like the last bit of her running around the mall escaping from the <laughs> robot wasn't like 30 minutes long and like really. <laughs> so when I saw you put it on Letterboxd, I was like, God, I hope you watched that with Matt. Did you watch this by yourself or did you yes. watch it? With- oh. Matt had already seen it with his friends. They had a sh- they have shitty movie nights. So they watched, <laughs> they watched this and they watched Sleepaway Camp. I was just hoping because I knew he visited and I was like, God, I hope they watch that together. I hope Chris is not watching this by himself. Cause I mean, like it takes a special kind of person to sit down and watch shopping mall by yourself. And I think that most <laughs> of our listeners and us included are the kind of people who would do that sort of thing. Special you know, but- kind of people. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I watched it. I didn't regret it, but you know, I, that's why I gave it right in the middle. I gave it a 2.5, you know, that's my gray area. So, so when I come to Boston, 
when 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 the coronavirus is finally done we need to like sit down have several drinks and then watch chopping mall again and see if you raise it up to like three stars <laughs> oh i don't know I, I that's one thing i'd love to see a remake of just like a satire remake of you know in the vein of um that one movie we liked that's like where they like they go into the they need to make a sequel for the that final movie girls where, yeah, yeah the final girls yeah. where they're in chopping mall <laughs> i know it's very on the nose like yeah i would love that that would be great we should you know what <laughs> makers of the final girls <laughs> take a minute but just a minute and write that screenplay <laughs> Move on. Move on to the next thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Shouldn't take too long. I mean, come on, but it'd be gold. <laughs> I love Chopping Mall for all the wrong reasons. You know, there's some hot guys in it, though. Yeah. Oh, my God. For the 80s. I used to think that like the 80s guys are not that sexy. But the more I watch some of these 80s movies, I'm like, no, I changed my mind. I don't know. Yeah. I, I can't wait to get that book. So I want to see the, the the worst movies, the movies you love to hate or whatever. I would love to have a side fucking podcast and just make it through all that. But I know there's going to be some bullshit in there that I just don't want to watch. But hey. Yeah, well, we'd make our own list. Well, I think that just about brings us to the end of our Shooting the Flames conversation for April. I know it's the month of April Fools, but there's really, there's really nothing to laugh at right now. So... <laughs> Which is why we're bringing you some horror comedies this month, starting with Cabin in the Woods and finishing with Cabin Fever. That's right. Two horror comedies about self-isolation and the horribleness that comes along with it. I don't know. Yeah. But we'll also be giving you our streaming suggestions for when you're holed up in your quarantine. That's right. Chris and I have been making a list of movies that are streaming on multiple platforms. And checking it twice. <laughs> Funny you should mention that. I have a Christmas movie on my list, actually. Mm. So, uh, guys, that's coming soon for all of your quarantine needs. Um, we're going to lead you in the right direction, hopefully, with some of our choices. Um, so stay tuned for all of that. Like we said earlier in the episode, we love reviews and patrons. So head over to Apple Podcasts, leave us a five-star review and a little uh, snippet of why you like our podcast. We're going to read it on our Shooting the Flames episode next month. And head over to patreon.com slash the film flamers to check out all of our bonus content and we will give you a shout out here as well or as always we're available on social media at the film flamers on twitter facebook instagram and you can email us at tired queens at filmflamers.com which is getting actually surprisingly the last two months people have actually emailed us which has been amazing or you can call us please at 972-666-7733 that's right i know you guys are in your homes hopefully we all need to stay in contact during these times give each other recommendations on movies to watch and so on and so forth we're all in this together here at the film flamers so take part in the conversation that's right well chris I think I need to sign off now and go have some more quarantinis or something. <laughs> so until our next episode, everybody. Sweet, Sweet dreams. dreams. How often do we ever match that up? Like we never actually say it together at the same time, right? It's always no, just I match it up in editing. <laughs> always. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> <laughs> Hmm. <sighs>